Good day everyone, I'm Janeline Bulawan and I'm your lecturer for today. Our topic will be the types of seeds, type of fruits, and parthenocarpy. And now, let's go to the types of seeds. There are three types of seeds, which are orthodox, recalcitrants, and intermediate seeds. So what are, is orthodox seeds? Orthodox seeds are capable of being dried to internal seed moisture of less than 12% water stored at freezing temperatures and surviving. So it needs to be stored in a cold, dry place and also it needs to be uh, stored in a low moisture content which is less the, lesser than 20% um, percent of moisture because when it exceeds to that uh, moisture content, it will um, disturb its dormancy and now starts to uh, germinate. So it dries out naturally on mother plant to a low moisture content, which is 20%, and can be dried to low moisture content at 5% without damage. So can be stored at low temperature, example the rice, the corn, the beans, the vegetables, seeds, the pili, and the nuts so these are the examples so it needs to be dried out and then to be stored because it will respire and also you know already that respiration it will also have some water content so it will add to the humidity and the moisture content of the seeds if being stored mostly in the cellophane or the socks when it is not properly dried so now let's go to the recalcitrant seeds. Recalcitrant seeds cannot be stored in a conventional freezer as they cannot survive after drying and or freezing at 20 degrees Celsius, so a lower temperature. So recalcitrant seeds are seeds that needs to be stored in its um, high moisture content. So because when this type of seeds need will be dried out and the the embryo will not grow and the embryo and then the sperm is will now dead become dead. So recalcitrant uh, do not dry out normally on mother plant and shed in mo moist condition which is fifty to seventy percent of moisture content so higher than the orthodox seeds so seed larger than orthodox em embryo is only for 15 percent of the orthodox and killed if moisture content is reduced below critical values by 12 to 30 percent and susceptible to freezing below zero degrees celsius or the chilling from 10 to 15 degrees celsius so how about uh, these are the tropical fruits which are the recalcitrant seeds that needs to be stored in that certain number of moisture content now seeds of aquatic species large uh, seeded species wild rice tropical fruit crops rock fruit cacao rambutan lanzones and others we have chico durian garambola which is the uh, the balimbing, the averoa, the ake, uh, dragon fruit, the coconut, though, so they are tropical fruits. And now let's go to the intermediate seeds, which can withstand desiccation to about 10 to 12% moisture content and can be stored under hermetic conditions. So what is hermetic condition? It is a it must be completely sealed and especially against the scape of entry of the air. So lose viability more rapidly at low temperature which is lesser than 10 degrees Celsius than at warm temperature from 12 to 21 degrees Celsius and the examples of intermediate seeds are coffee, oil palm, papaya, citrus, star apple, and 
chico. ¿Ok? So, now let's go to the type of fruits. So, what are the type of fruits? Type of fruits are fleshy fruits, which are juicy. Second is uh, dry fruits and maybe indehiscent or dehiscent. So, first is the fleshy fruit, which are juicy. First, we have berry and has an entirely fleshy ovary. Examples are tomato, dates, the blueberries, the banana, the capsicum or the pepper, and the hesperidium. Second is the hesperidium. We'd have a leathery rind, which are the oranges, the grapefruit, the lemons, and the lime. And for the third uh, fleshy fruit are pepo. They are called pepo, which is a type of fruit defined by hard rind and a fleshy inner matrix, which are melon, the, the watermelon, the pumpkin, and the squash. So let's now go to the fourth one, which are the group and is a fruit with a flashy exterior and a single stony pit surrounding the seed which are examples are cherries the, the mangoes uh, the cranberries the peach the uh, the coconut the olive so for the poems let's now go to the poems and have a flesh exterior in the center with papery carpels examples are apples and the pears now let's go to the dry fruits uh, which is maybe indehiscent or the dehiscent one So first, the indehiscent fruits, which are those that do not split open at maturity and are usually one or two seeded. First, we have akin. It is a single seeded fruit with seed attached at only one place to the pericarp. Examples are sunflower seeds, the strawberry seeds, and the buckwheat seeds. Second group is the caryopsis, which is a fruit is similar to a, to an akin. akin however the pericarp sticks or clings to the seed examples are corn rice barley rye amaranth sorghum the oat and the wheat seeds third is the samara it is usually single seeded with a member's wing examples are maple the elm and the ash the fourth one are nuts it is a hard one seeded fruit examples are oaks the walnut and the hickory and the fifth one is the uricle it is like as an is like an akin but the ovary wall fits loosely around the seeds which example is the finger melee and the pigweed Sixth one is the nutlet. It is a small version of a nut. Examples are birch and the hornbeam. So let's now go to the dehiscent fruits, which are fruits that split open upon maturation. So first, we have legume pods. And it is composed of a single carpel and has two longitudinal sutures. First, we have soybeans, the green beans, and the peas. Second one is the follicle. And it is composed of a single carpel and splits open along one suture. Examples are milkweed. Third one is the capsule. And it is composed of more than one carpel that are united and form many seeded fruits. First and second examples are okra and cotton seeds. Okay, the fourth one is pixies. 
This is a type of capsule with a lod that falls from the fruit. Examples are prairie slains. So they are pixies. So let's now go to the part thinocarpy. So the Greek word parthenos means virgin and carpos means fruit. So literally means the virgin fruit. So the production of fruit without fertilization, which is a fruit, is therefore seedless. Okay? Remind, uh, please be reminded, it must be seedless. Ancient origin, oldest pattern of carpic fig, first grown at least 11,200 years ago. So what are the types of parthenocarpy? First, we have the stimulative uh, types, and second is vegetative parthenocarpy. So what is parthenocarpy? Parthenocarpy is the production of fruits without the fertilization of the ovules. So fruits like banana and figs are developed without fertilization and do not produce any viable seeds. So what is a stimulative parthenocarpy? So it is the process of pollination or other stimulation is required for parthenocarpy like fruits examples are banana and watermelon so banana is a good example of parthenocarpy in this natural process the produced bananas are sterile so it will not uh, germinate and the seeds are not viable so develop without viable ovaries and do not produce seeds so which means they must propagate propagate vegetatively so this type of parthenocarpy occurs when pollution, pollination. This type of parthenocarpy occurs when pollination occurs, but fertilization doesn't. So it occurs by the insertion of the ovipositor of a wasp into the ovary of a flower. So how is parthenocarpy induced artificially? So parthenocarpy is induced artificially by the use of plant growth regulators we know already plant growth regulators of the plant hormone the five major plant hormones which is the cy cytokinin oxin the abscisic acids ethylene and the gibberellins so the development of partenocarpic fruits is stimulated when the plant hormones such as okay i mentioned already that gibberellins the oxins and the cytokinin are sprayed on the flowers so the three plant hormones are being sprayed on the flowers to create the parthenocarpic effect examples are grapes in which uh, it will help to become seedless fruit so second is parth vegetative parthenocarpy so this generally takes place without pollination and due to the absence of pollination, no seeds are produced within the fruits. So for examples are cucumber, the citrus, and the pineapple. So now let's go to the benefits of parthenocarpy. We have here six. So first, this is more healthy and the results are achieved easily. Second, provides seedless fruits and improves the quality. Third, it reduces the complete cost of the cultivation. Fourth, this improves crop yield without using organic pesticides. Fifth one, plant growth regulators are natural and the fruit produced are larger. And the sixth one, which is the last, parthenocarpy keeps the insects and pests away without using chemicals because there is no requirement of pollinating insects for the formation of the fruits. So this protects the plants from being attacked by the pesticides. So without insects, therefore, there will be no pesticide or insecticides to be used. And that's all. Uh, please email me at jbulawanatasket.com that added that page if you have some questions that and some queries about this topic so thank you and god bless